All right, guys, what's up? Y'all doing today? So look, I'm going into Laureles. Laureles is known for beautiful trees, but I have to walk. I, well, I don't have to. I'm choosing to walk to a location. I'm going to meet my buddy for coffee. And from here until there, we're going to talk about something serious. While I was in Mexico, I was seeing more cases of foreigners coming here and then being killed. But something interesting is happening as well they're evolving these gangs these people who who are doing these acts of violence they're going up a notch actually they're going back to what they used to do back, back in the 1990s early 2000s and that's kidnapping before you just had to be careful you know if a girl was being really pushy coming back to your place slipping some drugs in your drink as you guys are partying with each other or whatever and then they drug you and they take your stuff. But now they found out that they can get more out of you guys. In the past couple of weeks, there's been several cases. Two cases that happened recently that blew my mind. One of the cases was this guy from, I believe, Minnesota. An Asian guy, right? From a community that's very tight-knit seems like because I'm seeing a lot of comments from this community and it was covered by major news channels in the States. He actually came to Medellin, met a girl, I guess on a dating app, I'm not sure, and they were talking. They went out and then he came back home, he showed his family everything, her pictures, talked to all, like this girl's amazed, this and that. They were in communication back and forth and then he came back to meet her again and that's when she made her move. Her and her friends basically kidnapped him, tortured him, had him contact his family for the family to send the money. And, and what, what ticks me off the most, it was only $2,000 that they asked for. And then after they got the money, they tortured him even further and they killed him. They stabbed him to death and left him there dead. It's crazy. It's like these people that do this kind of stuff don't have any kind of their hearts, their heart is hard, they're, they're, they're cold-blooded. Cold-blooded killers, man. And that's why you guys have to be so careful, you know, coming to this country, coming to the city, and I guess being naive. But even in this, in this situation, Jesus. I mean, the guy, I don't know how much he knew her, maybe he went on one day, I'm not sure, but it sounds like now they're playing the long game. They're playing the long game. They're seeing that everybody's catching on to what they're doing, right? And not everybody's falling for the tricks anymore. Some YouTube videos have come out actually trapping these girls that, that do this Copa Lamina. It's getting, it's getting out with my videos. I'm talking about it. I've been talking about it. So maybe they say, you know what? Let's play the long game. Let's get them, let's get, they get them to trust us, to know us, and then we move. That's super scary. I don't know the exact details on the case for the Asian guy who they played the, the long game on him. But in my in my experience, in my mind, I'm thinking it's possible, like what's the possible red flags that he could have looked out for of this girl? And this is me assuming, and I may be 100% wrong. He may have done everything right and they're just getting more intelligent, these, uh, these criminals. But if she was asking him from like when they first met, and she was asking for help, for financial support, for money. Hey, my grandmother's sick. Hey, this is that. She could be one of those girls. And he was just sending her money, supporting her, that kind of thing. And then she maybe talked to one of her, her friends out in the neighborhood, whatever, the, the gang friends, whatever. And they said, look, we can get more money from the guy. When it comes, let's set him up. Let's kidnap him. Let's get more money off him. That could have been the situation. Or it could have been, like I said, these criminals are getting way more intelligent. They're biding their time to make the move. The other guy who fell victim to something like this, he was actually hiking on Tres Cruces and had, I think it had nothing to do with the girl. I don't know. He could have been led, he could have been led there by somebody, but possibly he just went for a hike on Tres Cruces. Again, I'm, again, I'm assuming, I don't know, but from my experience, if you go on the days that everybody else goes and the times everybody else goes, the Tres Cruces for the hike up the mountain, you should be fine because that place gets packed. Literally thousands of people are climbing at the same time. But if you go during the days that nobody goes, 
that area is right next to some very dangerous neighborhoods. Some people who won't think twice about killing you for your cell phone. And unfortunately, that happened to this guy. He was hiking, possibly on a day he should not have been there when it was not busy. Some muggers came up on him with a gun, mugged him, maybe put up a fight, they, hit, they pissed with him over the head. And I believe he was found by somebody, taken to the hospital, and he died in the hospital, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Let me tell you guys before, because I want to say in the comments, well, Dave, what are the days, what are the times? You go Saturday, Sunday, from whatever, six in the morning till about 12 in the, in the afternoon. After that, you need to get off that mountain because it starts getting empty. People show up early do the hike on Saturday and Sunday, okay? On the weekdays, I wouldn't do it. And after midday, I wouldn't walk up that mountain. What you guys have to understand is that this city is still a dangerous place. It's not, it hasn't become, it's a lot safer than it was back in, what, the 90s, early 2000s, whatever. But it's still dangerous, <laughs> you know? You have to watch your back. You have to have street smarts. You have to not be naive when you come here. I still love the city. I still love this country. And I still come back here. I'm not sure if it's because the fact that maybe a lot of these people that fall victim, they haven't traveled that much outside the United States or maybe they have, but they went to, you know, their trip to like Cancun or, or Cozumel or, you know, Canada or whatever. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I, I believe you can be safe here in this country, in this city. I really do. You have to know what to look out for. The, watch out for the red flags. Don't be so gullible. Even Colombians, even people in Medellin, they're suspicious of other people, you know? For example, it's not very common for people to invite you over to their home unless they really know you, right? That's just it. You know, they don't, they don't talk about their private stuff to a lot of people because just what they grew up with, right? So they're, they're cautious, but they still live here. They still love the city. I love the city. So I just hope this stuff doesn't happen anymore. I hope it gets better, but I don't think it will. I think it'll continue to get worse because of what's called copycat crimes. When, they, when, when people see that a certain crime works and they're actually making money off it and it's very easy, more people want to copy it. I hope I helped. I hope I was able to help. And I, again, I'm sorry. I feel bad for the families of the victims. And I hope that it won't happen anymore, but it most likely will. So I already arrived to my spot. I walked to Pergamino Coffee Shop here in Laurel. This is actually a new location. I think it's a little under a year or so. It looks nice. Nice house. 